How's it going everybody? Adam here from Coding Basics. A couple things before I get started in this tutorial. Um, I do apologize if I my voice sounds a little weird. I have been fighting a little bit of a sore throat. And secondly, I've started uploading some pages to my website, codingbasics.ca, so check that out. There is written code on there for all the tutorials I'm doing. As well as if there's anything I forgot to mention in a video, I'll put it up there. Um, so yeah, check it out. There's a forum there if you have any questions about any of my tutorial videos. And yeah, just I'd really appreciate you guys checking out my site. So, for this video, tutorial number 5 in the series, I believe, we are going over functions. Now, think back to tutorial 3. We went over filtering. And we first uh, used the stream.filter method to... Uh, pass in a lambda expression to do the filtering, and then we created a predicate to do the filtering. Well, today we're going over a different functional interface, which is the function. Um, so, to use it, just like with predicate, you got to import the java.util.function package, and there is a functional interface called function. Now, with the predicate, it was the only thing a predicate could do was return a boolean. So that's why it was used for filtering. Functions can do the same thing. They can uh, return a boolean or they can, um, you know, return a number. They can do a lot more. So there's more you can do with them. So we're going to go over a couple uses of that. First, we're going to go over the filtering example again. So the predicate only took one parameter and it's greater than and less than signs which was the input type function takes in an input type as well as a return type so I still am using the same player class I used in the last video only difference is I made a two string method because we're going to be printing it out and I still got the same players saved inside this list called players so this um, function it's going to take in a string and uh, then it's going to return um, a predicate because we're using this for filtering so we want to return a boolean so it's going to take in a string return a predicate and the predicate is taking in a player alright and we're going to call this function starts with letter and you'll see when we're done this function that this is a more versatile way of uh, filtering uh, compared to a predicate. So we're going to start, we're going to set this equal to, and the first thing we have to take care of is the input type. So it is going to take in a string, which in this case is a letter. So we'll create the variable letter, and we're going to put our arrow token. And now it returns a predicate, which is another lambda expression. So this predicate is taking in a player. So we're just going to call that variable player arrow token, and we want to return player dot first name because that was the variable in our player class. Take care of first name. So player dot first name dot starts with a built-in string method, and inside here we're going to put letter. Now, if you remember the uh, filtering uh, video, we created a predicate that, um, actually, I'll just recreate the predicate quickly. So, predicate uh, starts with A was our predicate, and it took in type player, or it probably took in type string, but I'm just going to use player just for the sake of this. And, um, then an arrow token, and then it just returned um, player dot first name dot starts with and then a. That's how we coded it. And um, oops, trying to equal sign in equals. Player. Sorry. All right. There we go. So 
we hard-coded the predicate to only check if the first letter was A. Well, using this function, we can pass in any letter to see if it starts with any letter, so that's how it's more versatile. So, in this case to filter, we're going to take the players list and stream it through the pipeline, and then we're going to filter. And you don't have to uh, put a lambda expression here. Um, all you got to do is type in starts with letter dot apply and whichever letter we want to put in there. So in this case, we're going to starts with letter A. All right. Um, and then. For each one, we're just going to print out that player. Alright, there you go. So, we're going to run this now. And there you go. It printed out what we wanted it to. Um, in the toString method, it prints out the uh, first, or the last name, comma, first name. So, we wanted it to print out all names, or all first names starting with the letter A, and in this case it's only Anze Kopitar's name. So, that is the result we wanted to. Um, but, you know, you can be more versatile, like I said, so we could do B if we wanted to. And then it's going to print out Bobby Ryan. So, you can see how this is a better way to code it. You can uh, have one function to cover all letters instead of creating a predicate for each letter of the alphabet. So that's how it's better. Next, I'm going to go over how we can use this for mapping. Last tutorial, tutorial number four, we went over mapping, which is where you take um, an object in a stream and you change it to a different value type. So this function, we're going to change the function. It's going to take in a player. Uh, what am I saying? Yeah, so it's going to take in a player, and it's going to map it to an integer. And uh, we're going to call this function map it. Alright, so it takes this player, and we want it to return player dot number. Because that's the variable in our players class that stores the number. Alright. So now, just to change it, we're going to take out this function and put in map it dot apply x. Now we're just going to create the x and arrow token, and there, it is ready to roll. Okay, what are you doing wrong? Oops, okay, so I didn't change this to the map method. Okay, that was my problem. Alright, now if we run this, there you go. Prints out all of the numbers of all of the players. It took all the player objects in the stream, mapped them to an integer, printed them all out. So, that's all I wanted to discuss in this video. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a comment on the video, like the video, and subscribe. Check out codingbasics.ca, and I will see you in the next tutorial.